Tonight, I would love to share a little story with you guys. A few months ago, we were in Ohio, and it was very cold outside. And our hotel had a pool. So I told Destiny, you know, we have a busy life, and we always live in hotels. And I told Destiny, today we are going to go swim. So she was excited, and we were excited. And everywhere Destiny goes, people give her gifts. All her clothes, almost everything she got, someone gives it to her all the time. Thank you, Pastor Michelle, because when we arrived in Bristol, there was a little cute white box, and everything in it was pink. Pink candy, pink chocolate, pink um, cookies, a pink doll, everything was pink. Oh, she was so happy. Thank you. Oh, so someone gave her a small pink suitcase. Oh, she was happy. You know we travel all the time. We're all the time in airports, all the time. So she was so excited about that little pink suitcase. But the little pink suitcase was locked with these little zip locks, you know, so that all the stuff from the inside wouldn't fall out. So we got to the room, and I asked my husband, Guy, I said, do you have a scissor so we can open up this little suitcase so she can see what's on the inside? He said, I don't think that I have a scissor, but maybe in a little, like, nail pouch where you have nail clippers and where there's a little, little nail scissor. So he went to look in his bag, and he found this little nail scissor. And the little nail scissor had a very sharp point. So I took the little cute suitcase, and I took that little Ziploc, and I tried to cut it open, and the, the point of that scissor cut my finger. And it was started to bleed, bleed, bleed. So I quickly went to the bathroom, and I said, Destiny, look at the suitcase. I quickly went to the bathroom. And it was bleeding proficiously. The floor, it was all blood. Sorry to gross you out. It was all bleeding. So I took a little, like a little towel, and I wrapped it around, and it didn't want to stop bleeding. So I said, Guy, can you come, please? And I, I said, you know, my finger is bleeding. But if, he said, let me go downstairs in the hotel and ask for a bandage or ask for something. I said, oh, no, 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 it will be OK. Oh, this is just a small cut, such a small scissor, such, this is nothing. So after a while, it stopped bleeding, and I went back to the, to the room where Destiny was. You know, I didn't want her to see all the blood, all the drama. I quickly went into the bathroom. She didn't even notice it. So after a while, she said, are we going to the pool? And I said, Guy, you know what? I don't think I can go with my finger like this with all the blood to the pool, I'm going to go with you, but Guy, you're going to have to swim with Destiny. So we are going to the pool, and I'm sitting on the side of the pool, and Guy swimming with Destiny, and I thought, you know, it was freezing outside, but the pool area is hot, but when you get to the hallways, then it gets cold, you could get a cold. So I went to the area where they had those towels at the pool, and I picked like five or six towels so that I could wrap her in, you know. But when I got to the towels, my finger touched something, and suddenly that my finger started to bleed again. And there was all around, everywhere where I walked, there was a trail of blood that I left behind. And I quickly started to clean it up, wrap my finger up. Uh, you know, you, I had to wait, because if you, if you move again, it's going to bleed again. So I kept it there, and all the blood was all over. I'm like, oh, no. So it stopped bleeding, and the next day would be my birthday. And on Saturday night, the pastor had said, let's go eat dinner with our whole family. We're going to have a party and eat dinner out. And all the kids, the grandkids, and everybody were there. So I still had this little towel around my finger because I thought I need to keep it protected so it doesn't start bleeding again. So we got to the restaurant, and the pastor soon asked, Ilko, are you okay? Is there something wrong with your finger? I'm like, oh, no, there's nothing going on. I, I just put the, I had a little cut. It's nothing, but I just put that little towel there. So we ate. Nothing happened. But when we were done eating, they give us, you know, Americans, we, they give you big meals. 
So we are used to take to-go boxes. You take half of your meal back home. I don't know if you do this in the UK. You know, I'm Belgian. We don't do that in Belgium. But in America, that's what we do. So, I, so they gave me a bag with the food. And when I took the bag, the blood started to flow. That bag was all blood. The floor was all blood. Blood, blood everywhere. It was like a horror movie almost. I'm like, oh no, this is gross. You know, I kept it and the pastor's wife, she told me, Ilka, do you need to go to the emergency? I am like, for a, I, I got shocked when she asked me. I'm like, for a small, silly cut, you want to take me to the emergency? You know, we pray for miracles all the time. We are miracle people. I, am I going to the emergency? I'm no, like, forget about it. And then she said, you know what? Let's all go together to the pharmacy. So we arrived at the pharmacy. And when we were driving at the pharmacy, I was thinking about this picture. I had a cut. I was hurt. The bathroom was full of blood. The towels were all full of blood. I bled at the pool. I bled at the restaurant. And this quote came to mind, and it says, if you never heal from what hurt you, you bleed on people who didn't cut you. Can I say it again? If you never heal from what hurt you, you bleed on people who didn't cut you. And many times we have been cut for me, it was a small, silly, stupid cut. But I kept on bleeding. I kept on bleeding. I kept on bleeding. And wherever I went that day, people saw and experienced all that blood. Why? Because when my husband told me, at the hotel, he said, let's go fix it, let's go, let me go down at the hotel, let's ask for something. I was like, oh no, this is nothing. Oh no, this will be, oh, don't worry. But I was bleeding in places where I should not be bleeding. Why? Because I had not taken care of it. And many times, we have been cut. We have been hurt we have been wounded by people that did us wrong by circumstances that were not fair by abuse by emotional abuse physical abuse sexual abuse by bullying by people that you trusted by people that you love by people you didn't like by people that misunderstood you or you and misunderstood them you know hurt life hurt people hurt people and life is full of hurt people even the church is full of hurt people and hurt people hurt people and we get cut there we get cut there we get cut there we get cut there and many times wherever we go we're spreading the blood I meet our brother that does a wonderful job an amazing work thanks you for all you do we salute you we meet him and we spread the blood I meet her and I spread the blood. She was here yesterday for the first time in the service. I talk with her. And if I come close to her and I'm not healed, I'll spread the blood. And we spread the blood on people that do not, did not even hurt us. Or people that have nothing to do with the situation. Or people that were not even there. And they love you, but you misinterpret their love. Because you have been so wounded and so hurt. And the pastor's wife, you know, I'm like tough. My husband, we are all like, come on. You know, we, we, do, we are no sissies. We travel the world. We go to dangerous places. We preach with people with AK-47 in front of us to protect us. And that pastor's wife, she was so sweet, so gentle, so, so tender. She told me, Ilka, let's go into the pharmacy. 
and she sat me down in the middle of the pharmacy and she went to buy these bandages and this and this and she said you wait here and I sat there and I, was, I had this amazing feeling I thought wow she's so gentle so amazing and she's going to take care of my wound. And I had a feeling like she was my helper. And I thought about this picture of the Holy Spirit. I had been bleeding. I think that bleeding continued for like, I think, eight hours. On and off. But she said, Ilka, sit down. And then she brought a little tube. And it was called liquid bandage. And liquid bandage, I had never heard about it because, you know, I'm not a nurse and I'm not in the medical field. And, and the liquid bandage, it's like super glue. And she came and she took a product. It's called liquid bandage. And it's like super glue. And she put some of that super glue, some of that liquid bandage, and she closed that wound and never ever one drip of blood came out of it. And she told me, I said, what is this? She told me, it's liquid bandage. And it closes the wound. And I sat there and wow, I was like, wow, liquid bandage, liquid love. Liquid love, liquid love, liquid love. And I was like, that's what the blood of Jesus does. That's why Jesus came. So he can bind up a broken heart and so that he can close every wound that we have experienced when we were a child, a teenager, in school, at home, at your job, growing up, in church, wherever you have been. So that the blood of Jesus, the liquid love, that was shared for you on Calvary, that was shared for you on the rugged cross. The liquid bandage, the liquid love. And the Bible says there is life in the blood. There is life in the blood. There is life in the blood. The blood of Jesus shared for me way down on Calvary. That blood that gives me life from day to day, it will never, ever, 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 ever lose its power. And today I came to tell you, maybe you're here and you're just like my finger. You had a cut. One cut, two cuts, five cuts, ten cuts, maybe hundred cuts. And you've been bleeding. It's been stinking. You know, the next day, you know, in the U.S., they don't clean the hotels every day anymore because of COVID. And the next day, all the towels with the blood... I wrapped a clean towel around it and I put it all in the hallway because that blood will start to stink. That blood, you know, that it's no longer red, it becomes brown. It's. I had to put it out because I did no longer want that stinking stuff in our room. And if you have been bleeding here, Maybe because somebody hurted you, somebody offended you, somebody did you wrong, please. Like I was there in that pharmacy and I sat there and that pastor's wife was like the Holy Spirit that treated me so softly. She closed that wound with liquid bandage. Let the liquid love of God, the perfect love of God, Close that wound because the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. How do we deal with fear? By enjoying his perfect love. 
How do you deal with anxiety? By enjoying his perfect love. And the more you know, have a revelation, and enjoy his perfect love, the more you'll be healed and whole. The liquid love. And you know, when you have a wound, it is okay to bleed at the doctor. It is okay to bleed at a doctor. When you come to Dr. Jesus, it's okay to bleed. It's okay to tell him your pain. It's okay to tell him you're hurt. It's okay to bleed with the doctor. And we have a doctor that is the doctor of all doctors. And his name is Jesus. And it is okay for you to bleed at a doctor. It is okay for you to cry out and say, God, help me out. Come on. You see me, I'm bleeding. I need your, your love to fill me the perfect love of God that casts out all the fear, all the hurts, all the pain. Because if we harbor it, it becomes so painful. It becomes so stinking. It becomes so rotten that wherever we go, we stink. That wherever we go, people sense it, people feel it, people experience it. People are like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? And the more you talk about it, rehash it, rethink it, cross-analyze it, debate it, respond to it, get paranoid about it, compete with it, complain about it, immortalize it, cry over it, kick it, defame it, stalk it, gossip about it, put it down or dissect it, it mo its motive is continue to rot your brain. It wants to continue to rot and it is dead, it is over, it is done, it is gone. And it is time for us to bury some of those rotten corpses and decaying stuff that we carry around. I want to tell you today, it is time for you to be your own funeral director. To dig that grave up and say, today I'm burying those rotten corpses. No more am I going to carry those rotten, stinking stuff everywhere and spreading all that blood around. and spread. No, I today I decide I am burying all those rotten corpses of hurt, of pain, of stinking stuff. And I am letting them go. Because letting go makes you grow and we all need to let go. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I'm God. When you paraphrase it, it says, be still, let go and let God. Be still means snap out of it. You know, some of those dancers, those R&B dancers, it's like they can move their body. It's like they snap out of it there. Wake up, stop fearing, acknowledge who you are, God and be in awe. And Isaiah 43 verse 18, 19 says, Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You know, we have Destiny. She loves to have those balloons with helium and then they go up bye-bye. That's what we have to do. Take, of those, take all those wounds, all those hurts, all those fear, all that jealousy, all that anger, and let it go and say bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. It is over. It is gone. Have a funeral. Don't carry it everywhere with you. Letting go means mentally releasing attachment to something. And instead of fighting for someone to be in your life or for something to turn out in a certain way, we let go of that need or desire and instead accept what is or what needs to happen and trust our life in God's hands. Amen. Have you ever been holding on, holding on, holding on, holding on, holding on to your ministry, holding on to your kids, holding on to this, hold, and let it go. He will take care of you if you let go. 
But sometimes we hold on to all that stinking stuff. Man, I know I didn't want to take care of that wound and it was a bad day. A stinky, bloody day. And sometimes we have those circumstances that give us stinky, bloody days, but it keeps stinky, bloody weeks, stinky, bloody years until we let it go. Today I want to look at what we need to let go of. The first thing is we need to let go of past hurts. Say past hurts. Somebody broke your heart. Somebody let you down. Somebody mistreated you. Somebody lied about you. Somebody talked about you. Somebody betrayed you. Somebody disappointed you. Somebody took your kindness for weakness. Somebody stabbed you in the back. Somebody thought you, that you thought was walking with you. You found out that they were jealous of you. Today, let it go. And let the liquid bandage, the liquid love of God, now close that wound. And you will no longer be going there with the stinking, thinking, rehearsing, rehashing, thinking, meditating about it. No. You close that wound. Ephesians 4, 31, 32, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and slander be put away from you. Along with all malice, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God forgave Christ. And it is a courageous decision, especially if you've been really hurt, to let go. And some people say that time heals emotional wounds, but it's only letting go that heals emotional wounds. It can hurt to let go, but sometimes it hurts more to hold on. You have no business carrying a hurt that happened years ago. Let it go. Forget what hurt you, but don't forget what it taught you. Okay? Second thing we need to let go of is let go of past places. Past places. Sometimes you cannot heal in the place where you got sick. Proverbs 4, 25, 27 let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right and to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. What are the places that you don't no longer have to visit? That bar, that cemetery, that place where you used to smoke drugs, that place where you used to go drink all the time, that place where you know that your ex-girlfriend is going to go or... You know, there's people, they know my ex-husband, my ex-boyfriend, every day he stopped at Costco after work at 5.30 p.m. I have a bad day. I feel so lonely. I miss him. I need him. Oh, poor me. I'm just going to go to Costco, take a car, drive around at Costco, and see if he's going to come there at 5.30 at Costco. And then you see him, and then you say, oh, wow, that's coincidence that you're here, that we meet today? <laughs> oh, no. You fell for it again. You know, there's people that go to the cemetery every week, every day. Let it go. In the symmetry, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens there. A lot of fear, a lot of loneliness, a lot of evil spirits that reside there. Don't go there and cry and mourn every day. Let it go. You know, I had heard a pastor, he shared with us, he had a church of thousands. And he used to be a drug addict 30 years ago. And he said his church was growing, booming, thousands and thousands and thousands. And one day he had a bad day. And he used to be, a, took drugs, he was a drug dealer. And something in he had a thought and he said, let's go to that side of town. And he drove his car down to that side of town. And there he saw the corner where he used to sell and take drugs. And he stopped his car there and he got out of his car. And after 30 years of being clean, being a pastor of a mega church, that's where he took drugs again. Where are those places that you should not visit? 
that are connected to your own life, that are connected to something that you should let go of. The next thing you have to let go of is your past mourning. Grieving and mourning are necessary steps in the process of getting on in your life. I'm not the person that says, you cannot cry, you cannot mourn. No, I'm not the person like that. Jesus wept too. But what I am saying is that there is an expiration date for your mourning and you should not mourn past the expiration date. Listen to what the Lord said to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thy mourn for Saul? That means that God had already put Saul aside, but Samuel was still mourning on the inside. Do you know that feeling of mourning? Missing, mourning, 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 mourning. When you lose a loved one, it is normal that you mourn and that you cry, okay? I'm not saying that's... But when it is past the expiration date, when you can't take care of your kids anymore, you can no longer go to work, one year, two years later, you're still crying, weeping, sobbing all the time. You are stuck in that mourning. And you are bleeding, 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 bleeding. Let it go. It is painful to lose a child. It is painful to have a miscarriage. It is painful to lose your mom. It is painful to lose your dad. I am not saying that it's not painful. Okay? But I am saying that there comes a moment where the perfect love of Jesus will come in and heal and fill that emptiness and heal that wound so that you will stop bleeding and will be able to let it go. You, will, you might still miss that person. It's normal. But it will not be that you can no longer do your daily duties, that you are so depressed, so in anxiety, so stuck that you can't move forward. The next thing, let go of your past sins. You know, there's no perfect people in this world today. Everybody here has made mistakes. Missed the mark, blown a chance, squandered a privilege, and neglected an opportunity. But put your past sins that haunt you and hunt you and hinder you behind you. Because some people, they come to church, to the doors of this church, and something says in their mind, you are a sinner. You remember what you did? And 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 it's like those sins, it hounds them. It's like a chain around their foot and wherever they go, that sin haunts them. No, the blood of Jesus forgives you, cleanses you when you ask forgiveness and there is no condemnation for those that have been saved. No matter what you've done, you're never too low to be lifted, never too dirty to be cleansed, never too broken to be fixed, never too lost to be found, never too empty to be filled, never too hurt to be healed, never too crippled to be cured, never too sinful to be saved, never too fractured to be mended. And we serve a God of a brand new start. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he... He, for he has made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And the, the devil likes to play on our mind the DVD, the, 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 the movie of all our dysfunction. No, let it go. Don't ever let the devil, when you come to church, when you pray, when you get into your car, play that movie of all the sins you've played. If you ask forgiveness, it is gone. Don't have a sin consciousness, but have a blood consciousness. Let go. The next, next thing is let go of past relationships. You know, my husband and I, we have a godly relationship. It's a covenant. We are knitted together. Okay? We have godly relationships. But there are also people that have ungodly relationships. 
And in 1 Samuel 18 verse 1, it says, When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own. Me and Guy, we are knit together just like Jonathan and Saul were knit together, and that is a healthy relationship. But there are many people, they are knit together in all kind of unhealthy ways with people that they shouldn't be in relationships with, and it is a whole like a web. And it's time for you to come out of that web. It is time for you to say to some of those people, bye-bye, 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 you know, goodbye. You know that in the word goodbye, there is a good in there? That means that it is good to say goodbye to some people. And if we do not say goodbye to certain people, we will still be bleeding. Some people... They are married, but they still talk to their old boyfriend, to their old girlfriend, because they need some... Uh... Oh, you laugh about it, you laugh about it, but you would know how many do that. They will still go and check out their ex on Facebook. They will still go check them out on, uh, on uh, I don't know, uh, Instagram or whatever. He says, don't raise your hand, this is not an altar call. But I am telling you, because many times when we've been in a relationship with someone, especially if your boyfriend, girlfriend, if you had sex with someone, it's like you have two blank A4 papers, like, and you stick them together, you glue them together, and the longer they stick together, when you rip them apart, it's like one part of that page sticks on the other side of the page. And that is what happens. There are some relationships, the Bible says, who has bewitched you. There are some ungodly knitting that went on, and it is very hard for some people to say goodbye. Good Let it go. Let it burn. And you know, you need to be strong. We all laugh about it, but it's not for the faint of heart. Especially if you love somebody, if you, you know you should... No. Especially for all the teenagers, for all the young people, for all the ones that are not married yet. You love somebody, but you see all the anger. Uh, you see the pornography addiction. Uh, you see he's not, he, she's not following Jesus. Uh, 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 but it's like this here and this here are singing two different melodies. I let go, I hold on. My mind said, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, my spirit, yes, 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 in church, yes, 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 yeah, but when you go home, you're alone in your bed, you're home alone at home, ah, uh, you know it, but it is so hard, and many times it's also because you've been wounded, rejected, you have fear to be alone, you have fear to be bullied, you have fear to be left out, you have fear to have nobody to belong nowhere, and you're just holding on, even if it's by a string, you say it's just a string, but it just feels so good. But it's holding you back from all the good things that God has for you. It's holding you back from the perfect that God has for you. Block them on Facebook. Block their number. You know, people say, oh, you, you know, you scroll down, you, oh, you just ring them by accident. You just push it on purpose. But then, uh, oh, sorry, who's on the phone? Oh, I just rang you by accident. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Let it go. 
Stop the bleeding for your kids. Stop the bleeding for the people around you. Stop the bleeding for the, this ministry. Stop the bleeding. We need healthy people that will be healed from their wounds. That will know, you know, it's even with pastors. Some pastors, they have bewitched people. Some intercessors, they tie people to them. You cannot do anything unless the intercessor says that you can do this and you can do that. Who has bewitched you, the Bible says. Prophetic witchcraft. You are called to be free. That prophet that calls you, you met him on Facebook. That prophet that calls you, say, send me 50, 50 pounds. Send me 100 pounds. I have a prophetic word for you. You will never be the same, but send me 100 pounds first. Who has bewitched you? Come on. Good. Good. Let go of past failures. You don't have to let that one thing be the thing that defines you. For example, there's somebody... Some people, they went bankrupt or they had a divorce or something bad happened. And it's like that defines them. That becomes their identity. And everywhere they come, they, they have like, you know, like something that says, I'm divorced. I was rejected. I went bankrupt. Nobody sees it when they see you. But it's like you're an advertisement board of your own pain. You share all your pain with everybody. You spread all the blood. And then they're like, they think in their mind, oh, that person is a failure. If you had never told them anything, they would think you're successful and you're no failure. Because your identity is connected to your failure. But your identity should never be connected to your failure. You are a success in God. You are the head and not the tail. And let go of that past failure. Don't think about it. Don't rehearse it. Don't remember it. Don't mention it. And live with God for your success. Because you and God are the majority. The last thing is let go of your past successes. God can clear your history so that it does not clutter the desktop of your soul. God can clear your history so that it does not clutter the desktop of your soul. If the enemy cannot derail you with the horror of your yesterday, then he will try to derail you with the accolades of your achievements. Do you see where I have been? Do you see my car? Do you see all the money that I got? Do you see my ministry? Do you see me? I've been to 123 countries. Do you see me what God did? Do you see? For some people, it is the failures, the past, the sins. But for some people, it is their achievements that keep them in the status quo. They have achieved what they dreamt, what they wanted. They have it all. And now they're just like happy. Let's have a cozy party. Me and my kiddos. Come on, come on, come on. But not knowing that God has even more. More, more, more. More. Some of us are worried about the mistakes of yesterday, but sometimes you can become paralyzed by your own progress and promotion. Success can make you feel satisfied with the level of your knowledge and unconcerned with the vastness of your ignorance. Don't succumb to the enemy called apathy. We have to be intentional about our future. Do you just ride your drive your car from neutral? Brrr, oh, we're just cruising. Oh, are you purposeful with your future? Do you know where God is taking you? Do you know what is the vision of your family this month in 2023, next month in 2024, in 2025? What is the vision for your life, the vision for your family, the vision for what you're doing? Are you propelled by your dreams or are you just like, you're just cruising. We're all okay. We have nice cars and a nice house. We've achieved it all in England. Paradise. Dreamland. Or are you 
you. Come on, more. Come on, come on, let's go for what God has. Come on, let's win more souls. Come on, let's bring more people in the kingdom. Come on, the kingdom of God has to advance. Come on, come on, let's go for it. Come on, come on. Our family has to become better. We are excelling in every area. Because if not, you would just become, we're okay, we're all okay. And we are just, if you're not moving forward, you're going My question to you is, what do you need to let go of? What hurt, what person, what place, what mourning, what success? What is it? So that just like she put that liquid bandage on my finger, the Holy Spirit, is to come and heal that wound, heal that pain, heal that rejection, heal that confusion, heal that anger, heal, and he will put it on. The next day I went to church, I preached. Can't even see it anymore. But what if I did not treat it? It might have bled all night and all day. Where have you been bleeding? What has caused you to bleed? And many times we bleed on the people that didn't even hurt us. We bleed on the people that we love the most. We bleed on the people that are the closest to us. You bleed on your husband, you bleed on your wife, you yell at your kids, you're frustrated with all the people that are the closest, the ones you treasure the most. And that person has already moved on, moved to another country, another city, is no longer in your life, they are no longer there. It's they left, but you're still bleeding, and others are suffering because you're bleeding. They smell the stench and they experience that blood. And if you say, I'm bleeding, just stand up. Just stand up. I know there's many people here that are bleeding. You've been bleeding on your mom, on your dad, on people around you. Stand up, I want to pray. I want to pray because just like my finger was healed, the healing virtue of Jesus is here to heal, to heal, to heal, to heal, to heal, to heal. the liquid love of Jesus, the blood of Jesus shed for me way down on Calvary that blood that gives me life from day to day it will never ever 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 lose its power if you need if you know that you need to let go of past hurts stand up if you need to let go of past mourning stand up if you need to know if you know that you need to let go of past places stand up if you need know that you need to let go of past people from the past stand up if you need to know that you're in stagnation that you're not moving forward that you're just going with the flow of life and that you need fresh vision stand up stand up Stand up if you come to church or at home and you're tormented by your past failures, failures, failures. Stand up. Today is the day to let go. All of you standing, I want to invite you to come to the front.